Welcome back to another little bit of Lisp. This time we're going to look at a few functions from the standard relating to arrays. We're going to look at array dimensions, array dimension, array total size, array rank, and length. Yes, that should do. That'll make a good little video. So let's look at what we have set up for us up here. We have two variables already set up. We have a0 and a1. a1 contains a one-dimensional array with four elements in it, and a0 contains a two-dimensional array, um, which is a two by four um, array. So let's have a look at the various functions we have at our disposal. Let's look at array dimensions first. If we pass it a0, it's going to tell us the dimensions of the array. Excellent, as we would expect. So, um, And it returns them as a list. This is probably one of the most useful ones, the one you would expect when you're thinking of querying dimensions, but it has a sibling called array dimension. And what's interesting about this is that you specify, as you can see down the signature here, the array and the access number. So we can say, hey, for array, let's do it with array zero. Give me for the dimension for access zero, which you can see is two, and then access one, which is four. So basically we, we are accessing this information that we got back from our array dimensions one at a time, so one dimension at a time. So it's two by four, so you can get it in this list format, or you can query it in this fashion. Um, if you're going to do this, you kind of need to know how far to go, because like if we take array dimension of A1, okay, well it's four because it's got four elements in it, but if we try and get of dimension one, it's going to throw an error because it doesn't have that access. It doesn't have a second access. It's a single dimensional array. So what do we do about that? We need another function, which is called array rank. An array rank takes an array and tells you how many dimensions it has. So A0 has two and A1 has one. So you could then say loop over those and use array dimension to get that information back. So that's useful. Um, the last, well, not the last one, and the next one I want to look at, because I'm getting ahead of myself there, is array total size. This one I find very helpful um, when you're using a ref row major or row major a ref. I can't remember which way around it is now, but I've done a video on it, so you can check that out there. If we take array total size of a1, because it's the least surprising, it's got four elements. Surprise. But if we pass in a0, we can see that it returns eight. So it's a two by four dimensional, it's a two dimensional um, array, but one dimension is as size two, another one has four. So multiplied together, that gives you eight. So that's really what that is. That is the products of the sizes of the different dimensions, array total size. Very helpful, again, if you're going to iterate over something in a row major fashion and get values out, this one's super handy. We have a lot of functions here. It seems slightly surprising because we already have length. What's the deal with length? And the thing is that length only works on sequences and multi-dimensional arrays are not sequences. If you try and get length of A0, it's going to throw an exception at you going, hey, this thing is not of type sequence. Only one-dimensional arrays um, are of type sequence. Now, we use, or at least in my code, I use multi-dimensional arrays less than one-dimensional arrays, so you don't run into this as often, but it's worth knowing as soon as you need to deal with these different sizes and different kinds of arrays. All right, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in another episode.